Hello YouTube, Dave here again. Uh, welcome back to the second installment of my series for beginners in making your first uh, first first level D&D character. Now, on the last installment I made a half orc barbarian and continuing along with the alphabetical order of the player's handbook, today we're going to be making uh, a bard. So for anyone who's wondering again, just, uh, just quickly recap, again this series is meant to be more or less a, a game made for people who are beginning uh, their Dungeons and Dragons journey. Not necessarily going to have the most useful information for experienced players, but if there are a few common rules issues or anything like that, I will try to uh, explain them as I go through and create the character. Uh, normally I would do this part of the introduction in front of the camera, but I'm going to be honest, I've been sick the last couple of days, which is one of the you know joys of having children in elementary school is that uh, they get sick a lot and of course they always seem to bring it home. So right now I, I look pretty awful, so I'm just going to stick to doing the uh, the character stuff in front of the camera um, and uh, hopefully by the next, in the next couple of days, hopefully I'll be completely over it. Um, so anyway, uh, so like I said, today we're going to be making a bard. Now, uh, for as far as the inspiration for your first character goes, again, there's a lot of places that you can go to. You can search things such as just Google image searches for fantasy images, and if there's a particular character that really seems to, you know, uh, strike you a certain way, then you can make a character based off of that. Um, you could also look at some of your favorite novels, uh, TV shows, movies, video games. There's all kinds of sources for inspiration. For me, I'm going to be doing this series mostly off of my collection of D&D miniatures. So when it comes to the bard, there are a couple of bard miniatures that I actually have for D&D, but surprisingly not that many. <laughs> there didn't seem to be a whole ton of love for the bards. The first one, and the one that I am tempted to make, is the Orc War Drummer. Uh, this is mostly sort of an inside story for any of us who played D&D uh, minis back, at, uh, back in the day in uh, Wolfville, Nova Scotia. But uh, I made a half-orc barbarian last time, so I don't want to, you know, go back and repeat a race so quickly. So I decided what I'm going to do is actually stick with uh, this particular guy. And this is Devis the Bard. So Devis was a, the, one of the iconic characters. See if his name will show up there. He was one of the iconic characters for uh, Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition. And I'm going to be making him sort of modeled off of this miniature and not the really kind of creepy, uh, horrible image of him in the 3.0 player's handbook under um, the, uh, the Bard class. And uh, in 3.5, I think he's under the description section where you have alignments and just the art was just really, really creepy looking for, uh, for Devis. But we're going to go with Devis, who is the half-elf, half-elf Bard. All right. So, uh, the first thing that we're going to do, and again, all these characters are going to be designed using some of the same uh, steps and processes, so it's going to be, all of them are going to be Adventurers League legal, and they are all going to have the uh, things like the, uh, the stat array, although I will do at least one video showing the point buy system, which you can also use for D&D uh, &D Adventurers League. <coughs> now, where the Barbarian was basically all physicality, the Bard is more focused on his mental attributes, particularly Charisma, uh, Intelligence, and probably his third best stat should be uh, Dexterity for you know, Agility and you know things like that, and most likely to be using uh, ranged or finesse weapons, which would be probably the, uh, the best way to go with the Bard. Now, for our Half-Elf, and I'm going to be honest, I've never actually made a Half-Elf in 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons. So let's quickly go to the half elf, or yeah, the half elf race description. Whoops, too far. There's the half orc. There we go. So the half elf. Uh, we're not going to go through too much of the, uh, the the flavor text here, but we're going to go on to page uh, 39 for the racial traits. Uh, so the big thing we're looking at is uh, we've got here, so Charisma increases by 2, 
and two other ability scores of your choice increased by one. Wow, that's actually really good. Uh, but that's pretty much all that they get. Um, well, actually, sorry, that's not necessarily true. They do get Dark Vision, uh, Fey Ancestry, so they have advantage on saving throws against Charm uh, and Magic. Uh, can't put you to sleep. And they gain proficiency in two skills of their choice. Wow. Uh, they can speak Elven, Common, uh, and one extra language. So they get they get a lot of stuff here. So they get plus two to Charisma. Now, similar to what I did with the Half-Orc um, Barbarian, I'm not going to put that plus two into my highest stat. Uh, the reason is I want to be able to increase some other stats to get sort of near there so that I can have some... Uh, decent ability scores all the way around. Now this isn't like, you know, a uh, power game where you're trying to mechanically break your character. It's just trying to get sort of the, uh, the the most survivable first level character that you can get using the D&D Adventures League rules. So, uh, I'm going to put my Charisma... Uh, charisma at the 14, and since it automatically gets plus 2, it's going to go up to 16. I'm then going to put the 15 up to a 16 as well, and then the 13, I'm going to make that into a 14. That way I've got all <coughs> even ability scores at this point in time. <coughs> now, you also kind of want to think ahead a little bit with your characters, so sometimes it can be really useful to go through and to read what they get uh, as they progress. For example, with the Bard, uh, at third level they get to choose their Bardic College. In the Player's Handbook, which is the only book I'm going to be using for these videos, there's the College of Lore and the College of Valor. Now, the College of Valor uh, focuses more on making you a good melee fighter um, and having, you know, abilities similar to, uh, to fighters, but I don't really want to take that. I want to make sort of a conventional, traditional bard. So, uh, I know automatically right now that if my bard gets into uh, melee combat and is using something that requires strength, then he screwed up. So I'm actually going to put the strength as 8. Uh, now I've got Charisma at 16. I actually want to have a uh, pretty decent armor class as well. So I'm going to put the other 16, the one that I increased from the 15 up, I'm going to put that into Dexterity. Uh, and then I'm going to put the 14 as Intelligence, since Bards get like knowledge skills that they can choose from. Uh, the other two, the 12 and the 10, I'm going to actually put the, uh, the 12 into uh, Wisdom, just to get the bonus on those saving throws, and Constitution is going to be 10. So I'm not going to get any extra hit points. So a character's going to be a little bit physically weak, but that's okay, because again, that sort of uh, goes along the line of what I want to do with this character. Uh, so, there's a few other things from the racial traits. So I'm going to write down all the uh, the racial traits whoop, in this section here. And I'll do that off camera. I'm also going to just fill in my ability scores. And uh, again, if you want to see the chart for your ability score modifiers, uh, we'll do that right quick, which will be on page... Uh, which is on page 13, as you can see up top there. So if you're following along in the player's handbook, uh, but I'm going to do like so I'm going to fill in the character trait or the racial traits and the uh, ability score stuff, and I'll probably also uh, pick my two skills. But we'll uh, we'll see how that goes. So I'll fill in at least the racial traits and stuff like that, and I'll be right back. All right, so I am back. So I just filled in, like I said, some of the uh, the features. I haven't chosen the skills yet, because uh, I was just actually looking at the bard, and the bard gets to choose their own proficiency skills as well. Instead of having a set list, they can just choose any three. So I'm going to wait and do that uh, sort of more towards the, uh, the end when I'm filling in that information. But I got all my ability scores here including their adjustments, and I've got just the background stuff, or the racial stuff that's kind of pertinent, which is the uh, the Dark Vision and the Fey Ancestry. And we're going to continue on. So, uh, as I stated before, when it comes to creating these characters, uh, generally what I like to do is choose their background uh, before I start filling in their uh, their class information. The main reason that I do this is because the backgrounds always pretty much grant some sort of skill proficiency, and I don't want to overlap with what they could potentially have for their class. Now, the Bard's a bit of an exception, <coughs> but I'm still going to go through the same process. <coughs> now, <coughs> excuse me, 
like I said, unfortunately I have, haven't been feeling the greatest the last few days. Um, so when we get to our backgrounds, now there's a lot of ones that just make a lot of sense when it comes to uh, particular you know class combinations. So I'm going to stick to probably the most um, traditional one, but there's a few things that you may want to sort of uh, have in mind. Like for example, I could make a bard acolyte. And an acolyte is sort of like a religious character that's good at, you know, reading people and stuff like that. So I could have him use his bard skills and his persuasiveness and, you know, things along those lines to be sort of almost like an uh, evangelical type of character going around and, you know, preaching on soapboxes and stuff like that. And, you know, I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, since I wanted to take the College of Lore, I could also take something along the lines of the sage background, which is kind of like your, traditionally it's for wizards, and that's your more studied, learned background. So that's one that I could take as well. Charlatan, you know, of course works really well with the bard as well, as does criminal. Um, especially, you know, things like, you know, blackmailer or, you know, um, stuff along those lines could really work uh, interestingly. So there's some stuff, cool stuff that you could, uh, that you could do. You could also be a spy. Which, uh, if anyone's played the Dragon Age, uh, you know, Dragon Age Origins video game, um, you'll know that bards in that game tend to be like assassins and spies, which is, you know, kind of interesting. So there's Entertainer, which of course is the one that we're going to be uh, taking here as well. But again, just try to think about some of these, uh, some of these backgrounds and how they could pertain. For example, you could be a hermit and be like Crazy Jared if you watched my uh, Zenith Trajectory video for the Shackled City Adventure Path. Uh, you could be, you know, an outlander from, you know, a distant place or, you know, outside a normal civilization, which would work well if you were making, say, the orc war drummer. Um, you also have things like the sailor, which you could be, you know, um, just someone who's used to sailing on ships and you use your, you know, your music to sort of bolster morale while, you know, on long sea trips. So there's a lot of different things that you can do. So try to think about, you know, again, those interesting combinations. But today I'm going to be kind of boring and bland and I'm going to choose Entertainer. So the Entertainer gets automatically acrobatics and performance as proficiency. So I got my sheet down here. Uh, I'm not going to zoom in, but there's little circles next to each of the skills. I'll just kind of lift them up here. So I'm just going to shade in acrobatics and performance right away. So I know I have these automatically. I don't need to worry about, whoops, that's perception. That's the wrong one. Uh, performance. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so we also have our entertainer routine. Now I'm going to be honest, I'm actually going to, actually I think for this one I'm probably going to take um, Singer. I'm going to choose this one. Uh, just because it sort of, you know, makes sense with the bard. I could do Storyteller as well. Uh, Tumblr, Poet, Instrumentalist. Oh, uh, you know what, why don't we, uh, I picked up this new set of dice here actually just a couple of days ago. It was only uh, 10 bucks, which is the price that I remember paying for these things back in the day. Uh, whereas, you know, some, some of them now are like, you know, 13, 14 dollars for the same kind of set. So let's just see if I can get these open here. Wow, those are really in there. Okay. So it was a D10 roll. I want to roll my background traits randomly, so let's roll this randomly as well. Four. That one might not work so well, though. Uh, well, you know what? Four is not necessarily the worst thing either. The four is Jester. So I'm going to go Entertainer. Routine. Jester. So I'll let the, the dice fall where they may. <coughs> Um, so I got feature, which is popular by demand. Uh, so it just says you can always find a place to perform, usually in an inner tavern, but possibly with a circus, at a theater, or even a noble's court. At such a place, you receive free lodging and food of a modest to comfortable standard, depending on the quality of the establishment, as long as you perform each night. In addition, your performance makes you something of a local figure. When strangers recognize you uh, in town where you have performed, they typically take a liking to you. So. Uh, we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to write down uh, popular by demand. So I'm not going to go through and write out the whole thing, just popular by demand. And I'm making the same mistake with this video that I did with my barbarian one and not putting spaces uh, <coughs> between the features. Normally I would cramp them all together like this. 
uh, but I really should try to uh, make it a little bit easier to read when I show it closer on video, and that's just page 130. Uh, I just put the page reference, so if I actually need to read the feature, then I can sort of do that. Uh, so, the next thing is personality traits. Now, this was a mistake that I've been making since 4th, uh, 5th edition first came out. Uh, you're actually supposed to choose two personality traits. And I don't know why I didn't uh, do this before. I think it's just because everything else you choose only one of, and they're all listed as singular. So they don't say, like, personality traits. It just says, like, personality trait, bond, uh, ideal, and flaw. So that was a mistake that I made, and it was pointed out to me, and it's just one of those things that um, I sort of glazed over it when I was reading the information. So we're actually going to go ahead, and I'm going to choose one, and then I'm going to roll the other. So for my personality traits, uh, the options are I know a story relevant to almost any situation. Uh, whenever I come to a new place, the local rumors, uh, I collect local rumors and spread gossip. I'm a hopeless romantic, always searching for that special someone. Uh, nobody stays angry at me or around me for long since I diffuse any amount of tension. Uh, I love a good insult, even one directed at me. I get bitter if I'm not the center of attention. Uh, I know people like that. Uh, I'll sell for nothing less than perfection. I'll change my mood or mind as quickly as I change the key in a song. So I'm actually going to take the I love a good insult. Because, you know, I don't, I don't, that personally, I actually don't mind that, so. Uh, you know, people, I think, are just too quick to get offended by everything these days. And sometimes it's just, you know, all in good fun. Uh, you know, I've taken my fair share of <laughs> insults and jests and stuff like that. And I just, you know, so that, that speaks to me sort of on a personal level. So, uh, even one directed at me. So that's the one that I chose, the one that I'm going to roll now is number eight and so that is all whoops not aisle I change my mind as quickly as I change key in a song All right, uh, so those are my personality traits. <clears throat> I'm going to roll my ideal uh, bonds and flaws. So I'm not going to go through and read them all, but they are on page 131 for this particular background. So I'm just going to go ahead and roll my ideal. Uh, the ideal that I rolled was creativity. Uh, so creativity is the world is in need of new ideas and bold action. Now, I'm going to write this quick, so it's probably going to be almost impossible to read uh, for anyone else. Uh, new ideas and bold action. And that is the chaotic um, option here as well. Uh, I did forget to do alignment, so I'm actually going to do my alignment here, and I'm going to base it off of that. So uh, the alignments, there's two different spectrums of the alignment, uh, as well as the, like, the neutrality that's sort of in the middle. So you have law and chaos, and then good and evil. Uh, I forgot to fill it in for my barbarian, who I would have made chaotic good. Uh, in this case, I'm actually going to make my bard chaotic neutral just so I don't have too many uh, similar alignments. Now, I'm not going to be making any evil alignments, but I will try to do all the other ones. So, get a neutral and enter Tainer. Okay. Uh, I also should write down uh, all of the other things that I get, because they give you equipment, uh, such as a musical instrument, um, at the favor of your admirer, so like a love letter, lock a hair, trinket, and a costume and a belt pouch. So I'm going to write that all that stuff down off camera um, just as soon as I finish up here. So next is going to be my bond. All right, uh, so number four is I idolize a hero of old t tales and measure my deeds against that person. So I idolize 
I'm just going to put a hero. I'm just going to sort of put this in my own words. Legend. Oh, yeah, I'm just going to say and compare myself to them. All right. Uh, just like I said, just putting it in my own words to make it a little easier. And then the flaw, I rolled five, so the flaw uh, says, I have trouble keeping my true feelings hidden. My sharp tongue lands me in trouble. <clears throat> so I have trouble hiding my true feelings. And my Sharp tongue. Oh. Often lands me in trouble. All right, so I've got the uh, the basic background information down. All I'm going to do is go through and uh, write down the other proficiencies, as well as the equipment that I get for my background, and then I'm going to uh, move on to the character class features. Uh, now, as far as the languages go for the half elf, or for the half elf, yeah. Uh, so the languages that I get as a half elf are um, I get uh, common and elven, and one of my choice. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to actually probably choose draconic um, for that one as the bonus language, uh, just because usually a lot of magical writings are done in draconic, so I figure that'll make the most sense. Uh, so I'm going to write down all that stuff off camera again, and I'm going to come back, and we will be filling in the class-based information. All right, <clears throat> so I am back. I filled in just the, that little bit of information there. So I got my equipment, languages, uh, extra proficiencies. I'm going to be honest. I did go back and I actually did change the uh, the background. I just uh, the the entertainer routine. Jester just doesn't seem to quite fit with this character, so I ended up switching to uh, to Poe, which I also rolled randomly. So I did change that. I just figured that it just you know the the Jester just doesn't quite work uh, the way that I picture this bard in my head. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, we now have our bard class information, which is on page 52. If you're looking for all the uh, the features. So, just going through here, now I was given a musical instrument but from my background. Uh, I'm also given another one from the class, and uh, I think for the sake of just making things easy, since I don't really see any other instruments, you can see like the lute barely on, uh, on Devis's back there, underneath his arm. So I'm just going to stick to just having uh, the one lute and not picking another instrument. Um, but anyway, the rest of the stuff that I get here, uh, so my hit dice are D8, so under hit dice, just going to put in a big D8, and currently I have one. At first level I get maximum hit points. I don't have a constitution bonus, so my maximum hit points are eight starting off. Uh, I don't get any bonuses to, proficient, uh, to in initiative or anything yet, so we're going to fill that in as just plus three. However, at second level, you get an ability called Jack of All Trades, and that gives you half your proficiency bonus, which is uh, the same for every first level character at plus two. Uh, but you get half your proficiency bonus rounded down for every other, um, uh, any sort of uh, ability score, ability check, or anything that you're not currently proficient in. So it just says starting at second level, you add half your proficiency bonus rounded down to any ability checks you make that doesn't already include your proficiency bonus. So that, um, for the record, dexterity or initiative is actually a dexterity check. Um, so I would actually be adding half my proficiency bonus to uh, that initiative. Uh, conversely, anything that says that it gives you a bonus on uh, saving throws without defining the exact saving throw, uh, that does also apply to death saving throws, which is kind of important. So if you get a plus one bonus to all saving throws, and you're making a death saving throw, you get to add the plus one to that. <coughs> so instead of needing to roll a 10 or greater, if you're getting that plus one, for example, you would only need to roll a 9 or greater. So just something to, uh, to keep in mind there as well. Uh, but that second level, we're not there yet, but again, just something that I thought I would clarify because it is something that does kind of come up. <coughs> excuse, excuse me. All right, uh, so <coughs> our proficiencies are light armor, simple weapons and hand crossbows, long swords, rapiers, and short swords. 
uh, three musical instruments of my choice. Well, maybe I'll choose a second instrument after all. Uh, my saving throws are dexterity and charisma, so saving throws are up here. So I'm just going to shade in uh, dexterity and charisma. <coughs> and my skills are just any three. And then for my equipment, I get a rapier, a longsword, or any simple weapon. I'm going to take the rapier. So I'm going to write that down right now. Uh, the next thing is a diplomat's pack or an entertainer's pack. I'm going to actually, oh, so I'm going to choose the, as an entertainer, it only makes sense that I choose the entertainer's pack. Uh, then I also get a lute or another musical instrument, so um, I also get proficiencies in three others, so uh, So I have lute, I have that sort of double dipped, but uh, I have that already, so I'm also going to take harp uh, Flute and let's take a uh, drum Alright, uh, so for the second instrument, I'm actually going to choose a harp, <coughs> or a lyre. I think you just choose like the, the smaller one, but um, I'm not going to get too fussy about that right now. And then I get a uh, leather armor and a dagger. And a dagger. So that's going to be all my equipment, so I'll put down the, uh, the dagger, whoops, as well. <coughs> <clears throat> All right, so I also get spell casting at first level. Uh, I also get bardic inspiration. So bardic inspiration oh, uh, says you can or you can inspire others through your stirring words or music. To do so, you use a bonus action on your turn uh, to choose one creature other than yourself within 60 feet of you who can hear you. That creature gains one bardic inspiration die, a d6. Within the next 10 minutes, uh, that, uh, the creature can roll the die and add the rolled number to one ability check, attack roll, or saving throw makes, which again includes uh, death saving throws. <clears throat> the creature can wait until it rolls the d20 before deciding to use the Bardic Inspiration die, but must decide before the DM says whether the roll succeeds or fails. Once the Bardic Inspiration die is rolled, it is lost. A uh, creature can have only one Bardic Inspiration die at a time. Uh, you can use this feature a number of times e uh, per day equal to your Charisma modifier, minimum of one. You regain any expended uses when you finish a long rest. Bardic Inspiration die changes as you level up, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. But I will put down Bardic Inspiration. Three per day. One D6. And then page... So I know all the information, uh, so page 53. All right, that's going to make that uh, pretty easy. And so for our spell casting, I'm not going to fill in all this, so I'm not going to choose the spells or anything quite yet, uh, but we'll go back to our chart here just to fill in some of the basic information, basic numbering. So here I have the, uh, the spell casting uh, sheet. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. So the first thing we have is spell casting class. I'm going to put down Bard. Spellcasting ability is Charisma. Uh, so the spell save DC, uh, it's a standard formula, but I'll just show it off here. So it starts at 8 plus your proficiency modifier plus your charisma modifier. Uh, and as I stated before, all first level characters have the same proficiency bonus of plus 2. So 8 plus 2 is 10 plus my charisma modifier of uh, plus 3 is 13. And my spell attack bonus is just my proficiency bonus plus my charisma modifier, so 2 plus 3 is plus 5. Uh, so I'm going to get a total spells known. I get I, So I know two cantrips and four spells at first level, and I get two spell slots. So I'm just going to put down spell slots 2, and I'm just going to put little tick marks on... Whoops. I'm just going to put little tick marks on the, uh, the sheet here just to indicate how many spells I actually can, can choose. So I'm not going to do that quite yet. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do, so I've got pretty much everything filled in as far as my uh, information goes. The only thing left to, to really do before I get into choosing the spells is to fill in my equipment <coughs> Excuse me, and to choose my other skills. So I'm going to do that right now. 
Uh, so for my half elf race, I get to learn two skills of my choice, and I also get to learn three skills of my choice as a bard, so that I get to choose five more skills from the entire list. So there's really no um, set ones that I have to choose uh, like from, it's, like it's, it's not narrowed down in any way, shape, or form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose uh, Deception and Investigation for my race, and then I'm going to choose History, Insight, and I think uh, Persuasion uh, for my uh, three skills from the... Uh, actually, let's take out Deception, because I'm already going to get a plus three bonus to that. Uh, so let's take out Perception and let's put it into, or sorry, let's take out Deception and put it in, uh, do, 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 do. Uh, I'm going to put it in Perception, actually. So Deception becomes Perception. Uh, the reason for that is Perception is just a universally good skill to have. Uh, your passive perception gets used pretty much all the time. Uh, the only last thing to do is just fill in these numbers. So, uh, just as an example, I'm just going to do with the saving throws because they're easy. You take your ability score modifier, and if, you, if it's shaded in, you add your proficiency modifier. So, strength, I get minus one because I'm not proficient with it, and I've got a minus one penalty there. Dexterity, I get plus five on dexterity saving throws. Constitution, I get plus zero. Intelligence, I get plus two. Wisdom, I get uh, plus one, and Charisma, I get plus five to that as well. And it's the same process for all the skills. Next to the name, it gives you what uh, ability score they use, like Acrobatics, for example, uses Dexterity. So, uh, three and two, plus five. Uh, why don't I just go through and do this? I'm actually gonna do this one on camera. Normally I do it off camera, but I'll just do this one on camera really quick. So, plus one for Wisdom plus two for Arcana, sorry, for uh, plus one for animal handling, plus two for Arcana because it uses um, intelligence, minus one athletics, plus three deception, uh, history, I'm proficient in that, so that's going to be plus, uh, that's intelligence, so plus four. Insight is going to be plus three because I'm proficient and I get plus one for my wisdom. <clears throat> Intimidation is going to be plus three. Investigation is going to be plus four. Medicine is only going to be plus one. Nature is going to be plus two for intelligence. Perception wisdom is going to be plus three, which makes my passive perception down here 10 plus this number, so 13 for passive perception. Performance, uh, uh, proficiency bonus plus in the charisma modifier, so plus five. Persuasion, same thing, plus five. Religion, I get plus two. Sleight of hand is dexterity, so plus three. Stealth is dexterity, so I get plus three. And survival is wisdom, so I get plus one. All right, uh, let's fill in my equipment. My rapier, my dagger, and my leather armor. I'll zoom back out here. And then I will choose my spells. All right, so the armor is on page 145 of the player's handbook, and I get leather. So leather armor gives me a dexterity of 11 plus my, or not a dexterity armor class of 11 plus my dexterity modifier. <clears throat> so I'm going to be getting uh, 11 plus three. So my starting armor class is going to be 14. Uh, next, I've got my weapons. So uh, here we have our weapon chart, and this is on page 149. Just going to zoom in a little bit. We're going to look for the the dagger, which we have up here, zoom in a little bit more, see if I can get it to really show up. So the dagger does uh, 1d4 piercing. It uses finesse, so I can use my dexterity. And it's also a light weapon, I can use it offhand if I wanted to. And it's a thrown weapon. So on my sheet here, oh, don't want to knock those guys off, just slide this up. So on my sheet here, I'm just going to put a uh, dagger range. And the range in the player's handbook is 20 feet slash 60 feet. Just get it to, there we go, 20 slash 60. So if I'm throwing it up to 20 feet, 
I use my uh, just normal attack roll. If it's 21 through 60 feet, then I am rolling at disadvantage. <clears throat> now, I use my dexterity um, and my proficiency bonus, so I get plus 5 with the dagger, and it does 1d4. And since it's finesse and I'm using my dexterity, I add my dexterity modifier of plus 3. The rapier is also has the same property. I know that right off the top of my head, so I'm going to be getting the plus 5 attack roll. And rapier, whoop. So it was 1d8 piercing and finesse. So 1d8 and finesse, so I use my dexterity. So plus 3 there as well. All right. So we are down to just choosing our spells. And then we're done. So I don't think I forgot anything else this time around. So I've got here my Bard spell cards. And I'm just going to pop these open. I remember what side I usually open these from. I don't think it's that one. There we go. And I only have the uh, the side that has the like the first level stuff um, out here. So just to make things a little bit easier, I'm just going to go through and just separate all the first level stuff. Unseen servant. There we go. All right, so I get two cantrips <clears throat> that I can learn that I know automatically. Uh, so I don't need light because I already have dark vision, so that creates basically the equivalent of a torch. So I don't need that one, uh, though it is a good one to normally have. Mage Hand is kind of interesting. Uh, Minor Illusion is kind of interesting. And I know I'm going to be taking <coughs> uh, Vicious Mockery, just because of the fact that it's a damage-dealing uh, cantrip. So basically I make fun of someone so much that it hurts their feelings, which hurts their feelings bad enough that it translates to actual damage. So, Vicious Mockery. Uh, my handwriting sucks. <clears throat> All right, so the other ones that I'm going to choose from is either going to be Mage Hand or Minor Illusion. So with Minor Illusion, uh, you create a sound, or you create a sound or an image of an object within range that lasts for the duration. Uh, the illusion also ends if you dismiss it as an action or cast the spell again. <clears throat> if a creature uses the action to examine the sound or image, the creature can determine that it's illusion with a successful investigation check against your spell save DC. All right, so Mage Hand, a spectral floating hand appears at a point you choose within 30, uh, within range, which is 30 feet. The hand lasts for the duration or until you dismiss it as an action. It vanishes if it is if it is ever more than 30 feet away from you, or if you cast a spell again. You can use your action to control the hand. You can use the hand to manipulate an object, open an unlocked door or a container, still retrieve an item uh, from an open container, or pour out the contents of a vial. <clears throat> you can move the hand up to 30 feet uh, each time you use it. The hand can't attack, activate magic items, or carry more than 10 pounds. I'm actually going to take Mage Hand. Just because you never know when that might come in handy. Uh, so I've got those uh, items there. And I just kind of want to put these back in more or less the proper order. So I'm not going to write down the specifics of the spell because I've got the, uh, the spellbook cards. <clears throat> now, first level, <coughs> first level, there's a lot of things to go through. Uh, so, for example, I'm going to take Comprehend Languages and Cure Wounds, because I think that those are good ones to have. Uh, Dissonant Whispers is also a really good uh, ability to take as well. Uh, and then, just kind of going through the, uh, the list here. Sleep, Speak with Animals. Thunderwave, Unseen Servant, uh, and I guess just for frame of reference, if you want to find the Bard spell list, and you want to see what actual uh, spells that they get uh, listed out, that is on page 207. But I've got the, the spell book cards in front of me, so I, like I said, I know I'm going to be taking these three, so I'm just going to actually write those down right now. Comprehend 
Languages. Cure wounds. Dissonant whispers. Uh, so what that does is it does uh, dissonant whispers. Does it's a saving throw, wisdom saving throw. Uh, but if the target fails, they take 3d6 psychic damage and must immediately use its reaction to move uh, as far away as its speed will allow from me. So it's kind of a crowd control thing, get people away from me. <coughs> and um, just going through some of the, <coughs> the other ones here. Uh, I think I might actually take... I think I might actually take... Um... Sleep is okay at first level, but it's one of those things that kind of slowly starts being useful. And I'm probably a wizard would be better off having something like that. But I think I might take, just in case, just because you never know, I think I'm going to take Featherfall. So I can choose up to five fallen creatures within range, which is 60 feet. Uh, a falling creature's rate uh, of descent slows to 60 feet per round until the spell ends. If the creature lands before the spell ends, it takes no falling damage. It can land on its feet, and the spell ends uh, for that creature. So I think Feather Fall is actually going to be whoops, the next one that I take. All right, and that's it. I think we are done. I just want to make sure that I've got everything filled in so I'm gonna zoom back out a little bit here so I've got my list of spells I have the spell cards so if you don't have the spell cards you can just write down some key information about them on a separate sheet or just the page number that each of those uh, spell descriptions would be on uh, I've got my equipment I've got all my ability scores skills filled in languages instruments uh, my background stuff, my class features, <clears throat> my bardic inspiration, uh, traits, character traits, including two personality traits, uh, bard, entertainer, got my alignment. So I think we're good. Uh, so that was making a first level bard. Uh, so we've got here, of course, we have Devis the Bard, our half-elf uh, adventurer. Uh, so yeah, there you go. So if you were interested in making a bard character at all, those are just some things to keep in mind and sort of the steps to go through. So I hope you enjoyed this video. hope you found it helpful. And uh, be sure to come back next week when we make a cleric. Uh, so thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. We'll see you then. Take care. Funding for this channel is provided by my awesome supporters over on Patreon. Uh, so everyone who has donated to that, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Even a dollar a month helps immensely, and without your guys' support, this channel would not be possible. I want to provide special thanks to Kennedy S., David L., Will W., Michael L., The Twisted Tentacle Inn, and Roll Stats for their generous donations. Thank you again to everyone who's contributed, and all of you make this possible.